Welcome to the second part of the Easy Filatune tutorial. We'll be doing a deeper dive into all the Easy Filatune folders and presets. In the very top part of the product folder, we have the Load First set. This includes an Easy Filatune camera, a distant light parented to the camera, and a filament draw option node with custom Easy Filatune draw option settings. This folder also contains the Easy Filatune base feminine and base masculine scripts. These are designed to help you transform your existing characters into tune characters quickly and easily. And they utilize your character's existing skin texture maps and shape so that your character's unique look is brought into a tune style. Because these scripts look for and utilize the Genesis 9 assets such as the Genesis 9 eyes and mouth attachments, as well as the Genesis 9 base anime male and female shapes, they aren't able to work on older generation figures. However, at the end of the tutorial, I will show you how to process your older generation figures with the Easy Filatune presets. In the first subfolder, we have Scene Settings. The first presets are the Draw Options presets that change your scene's environmental settings. These presets can give a variety of different looks to the scene, and coupled with the Easy Filatune shader presets can provide a variety of different styles for different non-photorealistic looks and genres. Next we have four camera sets. Each camera has a distant light parented to it, and each camera is a little bit different. The distant lights parented to the camera is to ensure consistent shadows regardless of where you move the camera, so achieving a more consistent look across each render. This becomes very helpful when you're producing a variety of images that need to go together, such as with comic book storytelling or any sort of sequential art. Next we have five distant lights. Each one is a little bit different, some cooler, some warmer in color, some brighter and some a little darker. Now if you already have a distant light in the scene, the additional distant lights you load into the scene will not show up unless you hide the other distant lights. Filament only reads or sees the very first distant light on the list in your scene tab. The distant light that is highest on the list is the one that Filament sees. If you want one lower down on the list to be the one that gets rendered, you must hide or delete the distant lights that are above it in the scene tab. After the distant lights, we have presets that can adjust the light intensity of the distant light. You'll first need to select the distant light in the scene tab before applying these presets in order to change the light intensity. Alternatively, you can select the light in the lights tab and manually adjust the lights intensity. There are also two presets that will turn on or off the shadows that are cast by the distant light. As with the light intensity presets, the distant light will need to be selected in the scene tab in order to use the cast shadow presets. Then there are the bloom settings. In order to use these presets, the draw options node needs to be selected in the scene tab. Last in the scene settings folder, we have the cast shadow types. In order to use the cast shadow types, you will need to have cast shadows turned on in order to see the effects of these presets. The next folder has presets for the skin. Like most of the presets in Easy Filatune, these are shader presets, so they can be used on anything but the object has to be selected in the Scene tab, and its surfaces have to be selected in the Surfaces tab. After that, we have Eye Presets. The first two presets are hierarchical material presets for Genesis 9. One gives a more feminine look and the other a more masculine look. The rest of the settings are for the Genesis 9 anime eyes. You have blue, brown, green, gray, and purple eye settings, 14 settings for each color. The gray eyes are perfect for adding custom colors. You just change the base color in the Surfaces tab, and then you can use those gray eyes as a foundation for custom eye colors.
The last eye settings change the highlight type. In order to use these, you'll need to select the Genesis 9 Tune Floating Iris in the Scene tab. The next folder contains shader presets for hair. For adjusting hair, clothing, and environments, I highly recommend using the orange icon. This is a script that automatically selects the surfaces of whatever you have currently selected in the scene tab. If you accidentally have the geometry shell tune outline selected, this will unselect it so that you don't accidentally use the shader presets on the tune outlines. The clothing folder has shader presets for clothing. I encourage you to get used to using this orange icon script. This is going to save you a lot of time and headache because it automatically selects the surfaces of whatever you have selected in the scene tab, but it also will unselect any tune outlines that you may have inadvertently selected. This will keep you from applying the shader presets to the tune outline, which will ruin the tune outline. You do not want to use the skin, clothing, hair, or environment shader presets on the tune outline. I highly recommend using this orange icon script every time you adjust the settings and use the shader presets. I recommend using this orange script often to quickly select surfaces and make sure that it unselects and it automatically unselects the tune outline geometry shells. Next up, we have shader presets for the environment props and architecture. I also highly recommend deleting anything from the scene that isn't in the camera's viewport, as this can save a lot of time when processing the scene and applying the shader presets to all of the scene's elements. Large scenes with a lot of different elements and a lot of surfaces can take longer to process, so you want to make sure that you're only applying the presets to whatever is seen by the camera. This base ground shader is really good for showing shadows on the ground. In order to see the shadows on the ground cast by the distant light, you will need to make sure that shadows are turned on on the distant light. Now there are also five Tune Water presets. Next up is the Outlines folder. This multicolored icon will launch a script that seeks out and automatically selects anything in the Scene tab with the words Tune Outline in the label. So you don't want to change the name of the Tune Outlines. You'll want to be able to quickly select them with this script, so make sure you keep the words Tune Outline on those geometry shell outlines so that this script will be able to quickly find them. Once the Tune Outlines are selected, either with the script or manually selecting them in the Scene tab, you can change the line thickness with these presets. You can also change the look of the outline by breaking up the uniformity of the outline, giving it a more artsy look. If you want to return to the uniform outline, you can use the Outline Artsy Off preset to reset the outline to a solid line. Next are the outline colors. These are shader presets, so you'll need to make sure that the Tune Outline Geometry Shell is selected in the Scene tab and its surfaces are selected in the Surfaces tab. Again, you can quickly select all of the Tune Outlines with the multicolored icon in the upper right and then you'll just need to select the surfaces in the surfaces tab. You can also manually change the color of the outline by selecting a base color in the surfaces tab. The last shader preset in the Outlines folder sets the cutout opacity to zero, which hides the surfaces from being viewed in the render. This can be very handy when you're processing older figures. This can quickly hide the cornea and or eye moisture layers, which often obscure the eyes. Now we've come to the customization folder. This folder is going to be a huge help in tweaking the surfaces to adjust to your personal taste preferences. You'll be able to get a wide variety of looks by exploring and using these settings separately or together in unique combinations. At the end of the video, I'll be sharing recipes to get a variety of different styles and looks with these presets. 
First up are the Diffuse Overlay Strength settings. And Diffuse Overlay Colors. And once you find the color that you like, you can go back and adjust the overlay strength. Next up is the Matte Cap Colors. Matte Cap Weights. Rim Amount. Rim Colors. Rim Shadow Strength. Shadow Colors. This one is Shadow Sharpness or Smoothness. It will go from extremely sharp, kind of cell shaded look to very smooth as you go along. So you can adjust the exact sharpness or smoothness that you like. Last is the Shadow Threshold Presets. This just means the shadow amount. Now to process Genesis 8 figures, you'll want to use either the base clothing or the base hair script on the figure. Select the figure in the scene tab and then apply the base clothing or the base hair script. This will apply the tune outline to the figure. Now you'll want to be super patient when processing Genesis 8 figures. Processing Genesis 8 figures will take longer, as it does take longer for the Tune Outline Geometry Shell to apply to Genesis 8 figures. Once the script is run, select the cornea and the eye moisture surfaces in the Surfaces tab, and then go to the Outlines folder and apply the Cutout Opacity Zero preset. With the shader presets included, you can then adjust the skin and eye surfaces to suit your personal preferences. Once you're more familiar with the product, I recommend exploring the different settings and you'll find the combinations that you enjoy using the most. A nice thing to do is once you find all the combination of settings that you really like the most, you can always save that as a shader preset for future use. I really hope you guys enjoy this product as much as I do. I have found it extremely helpful for creating a wide variety of different NPR styles. At the end of the video, I will be sharing recipes on how to get certain looks. I also plan on sharing more recipes on the Daz3D forum. Please go to the Daz3D forum and look for the Easy Filatune post that I have made. And please share your creations with us. I would love, love, love to see what you guys do with this product. I'm so excited to buy this product and so excited to see what you guys do with it. Thank you so much for listening and please enjoy these recipes and please share your own recipes on the Daz3D forum.